Hey everyone and happy Monday. I am here at the gym for our first installation of Mondays with Matt. This is my trainer Matt and he is going to help put together some 10 minute workouts that you can do at home. Today we're going to do abs because it's almost summer and everyone wants bikini abs and so that's what we're going to do today. So today we're going to work on some of the weakest parts of the abdominals that people normally don't work on. Most people work on uh, the rectus abdominis muscles, the front muscles, those are kind of the sexiest muscles, the beach muscles. Uh, but in fact, we will not only work on those, but we'll focus on muscles that people normally don't think about working on. And we'll work on neck safe exercise because a lot of people have back problems and they also have weak muscles on their side. So we'll start on those and then we'll progress through all those exercises so everyone can learn them. Perfect. And all you're going to need for this whole exercise is a yoga ball or a stability ball. Um, they call it by a lot of names, but you can just get one at Target or Walmart. They're only about, what, 12 bucks? 12 bucks, 15 bucks, very inexpensive, and they last forever. And you can use it as a desk chair, and that works your core while you're working on the computer and watching YouTube videos. So let's get started. So move number one is my most hated ab exercise, the side plank. So the first exercise that we're working on is side plank, and the main reason that we do the side plank is because a lot of people don't work these abdominal muscles, the side, the obliques, the quadratus lumborum, and it's what leads to a lot of weakness in, in the body, lower back problems, stability problems there. So I like to actually start the workouts by training these first. And typically an exercise is done long enough to where you start to feel fatigue. So usually any time less than a minute is a great amount of time. So let's go ahead and start the side plank. And this is usually done several ways, one on the elbow or it can be done on the hand. In addition, the feet can either be stacked on top of each other or one in front of the other. The, the difference between the two is that if you have the foot on top of the other foot is that you, you have less stability and you're more prone to fall down. So if, if you have, don't have great balance, place the other foot in front of the other and that will give you a lot more balance from side to side. Now once in this, you want to make sure the body straight, so the chin, the abdominal muscles and the feet are in a pretty straight line. I like to take the hand up and actually look up at the hand at the same time. And while holding this, focus on squeezing these side muscles right above the pelvis called the quadratus lumborum and really squeezing the oblique muscles on this side. And holding that for up to one minute on each side, but really only doing it until you start to feel fatigue because you don't want to injure your back. These are typically very weak muscles, so you don't want to overtrain them. You start out judiciously, start out slowly, and start building your time up over time. So once you do the other side, of course, you want to flip to the other side. Now, some of the muscles on the opposite side have already been working, so you might feel already pre-fatigued on this side. So maybe take a short break between doing sets so that you can have an even amount of time on most sides. And what I normally find is people's shoulders will start to get tired by this point. So make sure, again, that you take a long enough break so that your shoulders got enough endurance in the abdominal muscles, including the obliques and the quadratus lumborum, have enough endurance to do both sides equally. So again, up to one minute on each side. Exercise number two is a stability ball side bend. Okay, so starting from the wall position, okay? So first of all, we're on, the, we're on the ball, laying on your hip, right or left side, doesn't matter. Now notice Evan has her feet against the wall. They can either be touching the wall with your soles and your feet touching the wall, or they can be sideways like so. Now the reason that she has her feet spread out is to give her stability, because if she had her feet on top of each other, she might fly off the ball. We don't want that happening. No. So It's a stability ball. Bingo. So feet are going to be spread out. We want the knees pretty straight and Evan is going to lie on her side. And what you want to do here is make sure that you're evenly split so she's not rolling forward too much and she's not rolling backwards too much. The feet are spread out giving her stability so she doesn't fly forward and she doesn't fly back. Arms are above the head. The body is completely straight. She's not flexed forward and what Evan's going to do is contract these muscles, the obliques and quadratus lumborum muscles, beautiful abdominal muscles that don't get trained enough. So what Evan's going to do now is come up and contract these muscles. She's going to laterally flex and bend and then come all the way back down. And then back up again and back down. One of the hardest exercises you can do to develop the obliques and the quadratus lumborum muscles, including strength in your lower back, is this exercise. It makes for sexy abdominal muscles and a very strong lower back. Move number three, the perfect crunch. Okay, Matt, so we're doing the perfect crunch. What do people normally do wrong in crunches, and why is this the perfect crunch? So I like to call it perfect crunch because most people do it imperfectly. So I'm going to have you lay down, Evan. So uh, usually a crunch starts out by placing the hands behind the head. And <clears throat> when doing a crunch, what most people will do is they'll tend to bring their shoulders and head off the ground. Go ahead and do that, Evan. 
And the problem here is that there's too much flexion happening in the head, and so most people will injure their neck doing this, right? So that's, that's problem number one that we want to avoid. And this actually makes it easier on the abs, but harder on the neck. Let's go ahead and come back. So now perfect form crunch starts by not only having the hands behind the head, interlacing the fingers together, keeping the elbows all the way back, picking a point on the ceiling about 45 degrees behind you, and by tilting your head back about 45 degrees, what that does, it takes a lot of the strain off the neck. So what Evan's going to do here is going to crunch up, but not flexing forward as much as she was before, only at up enough to where the head raises off the ground and the shoulder blades, the top of the shoulder blades raise off the ground just a little bit, and then return back to the start position. Okay, so we're doing five crunches here as a sample. Notice that Evan's keeping her head back, keeping the elbows back. She's minimizing the stress in her neck and maximizing the stress in her abdominals to get a really good workout. Now, there's a point when these get too easy and you don't get enough of the burn. So what Evan's doing here correctly is she's keeping her knees and hips bent to 90 degrees. She's looking back 45 degrees, keeping her elbows back. She's minimizing the stress on her lower back and neck, maximizing the burn in her abdominals by raising the legs up. So this actually makes the exercise harder. Now, if your lower back starts to strain this, be sure to keep the feet either on a wall as an alternate or keep your feet on the ground. Okay, so exercise number four, the corkscrew. And since we're in Napa, it's the perfect exercise. Okay, so with the corkscrew, we're trying to stay, stay with the theme here of exercises that maximize muscles that we normally don't work, but also minimize stress in the lower back and the neck. So with the corkscrew, first what we want to do is place your arms down at your side, Evan. And from here, what you want to do is raise your legs up enough to where your knees are bent to 90 degrees and your hips are bent to 90 degrees. So the head actually stays on the ground, so there's minimal to no stress on the neck. So this is also a bit of a, a feel on um, the reverse crunch. And so what Evan's going to do is she's actually going to raise the hips and the legs off the ground just enough to where her sacrum or lower back just leaves the ground. Now, commonly people will perform this incorrectly by overly flexing and then bringing the knees right over the chest. So go ahead and perform one incorrectly. That's incorrect. So that is more hip flexors than abdominals. So what Evan's doing correctly is bringing her knees up and you really using a lot more abdominals than using her hip muscles to perform the exercise. Safe on the neck and brutally difficult on the abdominals for the best burn and the best looking abs you can get. Now that's position one. We call it the corkscrew mainly because the other component to this is actually a twisting motion. So when Evan comes up, instead of just going straight up and down, she'll actually go up and twist perfectly. Notice that she's not too far over her chest, her head's on the ground, and what happens here is she's actually working some of the outside abdominal muscles. So she's not only working the rectus abdominis, but also working some oblique muscles. So she's actually working all of her abdominal muscles at once. So notice that Evan does not only the center, but she does side to side. Advanced folks will be doing about 30 repetitions of these in each position, and beginners will be doing about five repetitions in each position. Exercise number five is going to be just a regular sit up. If you're going to do this at the gym or if you have dumbbells at home, you can hook your feet. If you're at home and you don't have dumbbells, just use the couch, put your feet under the couch. Or if you have uh, like a low bed, you can put your feet under the bed, but just as long as there's something holding your feet down. If you have a friend or a significant other, they can also hold your feet. Ready? Ready. Let's do it, Evan. Okay, so full sit-ups are considered one of the most valuable exercises and really just destroy these muscles and will really firm not only abdominals but also can help build a stronger lower back. The problem with a full sit-up though is a lot of people don't have the strength to bring their bodies all the way up initially. So what I'm going to have Evan do first before we show the advanced version is I'm going to have her place her hands behind her head and like when we showed the crunch what she's going to do instead of coming all the way up and doing a full sit-up is we're going to do the crunch motion first progressively. So Evan what I'm going to have you do is come up maybe about two or three inches off the ground with your head. Let's do that five times. So if you feel like this is pretty easy, what we can start doing is going to the more advanced position, which would be halfway up. So Evan's going to come up about halfway and then back to the ground. So she's getting a lot of work with the abdominal muscles and the hip flexor muscles. Let's do that a couple more times, Evan. And notice what she's also doing perfectly is she's not bringing her elbows in and she's not overly flexing her head, which is fantastic. So relax for a second. And so the first exercise, again, being the easiest, halfway up, second most easiest, and the, or the second hardest actually, and then the hardest one being the full sit up, which you'll get maximal contraction of the abdominals, the hip flexors, and overall strengthening. So now let's try the full sit up, Evan. Yeah, that's perfect, you got it. So what she's doing perfectly is her head, her shoulders, and her hips are really vertically well aligned. 
She's not only using her neck muscles and she's maximizing the torque and usage of the abdominal muscles. Her form is absolutely perfect and we'll get the maximal burn on the abdominals. Most people can't do more than say about 15 to 20 of these. So for beginners, I would recommend doing about three sets of five repetitions and for advanced folks doing anywhere between three sets of 10 to three sets of 30 repetitions of the full sit -ups. Go for 30. Woo! So for your last exercise, exercise number six, it's just gonna be a standard plank, which is how we always end our workouts. So plank position is a modification from, say a full push-up. So you basically are assuming a, a full push-up position. So how I like to do with anyone in general, uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but we're going to be doing this from the elbows. So essentially what you want to do from here is you want to go right to a push-up position from your elbows. This is the advanced version. So a non-advanced version for people that are just starting out the plank that have weak lower backs, they just had kids or whatever it might be, is you actually start out from your knees. So we just kind of showed the advanced version. Let's start Evan off in a basic position from the knees. So the important thing here is that her ear, her shoulder, her hip, and her knee are all pretty much straight. Some people will try and lift their hips up too high or have them too low, which causes too much strain and won't give you enough of an abdominal workout. So this would be a great beginner position. If you're able to do this for one minute straight, you're ready to advance the advanced plank position, which we'll have Evan do next. So the advanced plank, the ear, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle are all one straight line. So you're minimizing stress in the lower back and maximizing the impact on the abdominal muscles so that you get a great workout. In addition, notice what Evan's doing fantastically. She's keeping a nice 90 degree angle here, so her shoulders aren't too far forward or backwards. It's a nice streamlined position for maximal effect in the abdominals. With this exercise, I recommend starting out with 20 seconds and maybe moving all the way up to a minute, and then some advanced people will even move far beyond that as, as far as three minutes or more. But typically for the best workout, a minimum is more than enough. <laughs> So that was our 10 minute ab workout. It may or may not take you a little more than 10 minutes. Maybe you're really awesome and you finish it faster, but that's great. So if there are any other body parts that you want us to target for the next couple of videos, let me know in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you felt the burn. Come back next Monday or in two Mondays maybe. I'm not gonna make any promises for another session with Monday with Matt.